Well, let's move on to today's story. So we will start from the Ashanti region where we understand that people are putting up commercial buildings, but they are not providing parking spaces, and that is impeding on business transactions. Yes, Prince of Pierce report. A look at the commercial district of Kumase from a bird's eye portrays a dotted line of high-rise buildings decorating the skies. The irony of it, however, is that occupants of these newly acquired offices struggle to find spaces to park their vehicles. Like the ones we have in Accra, whereby you can, you can go and park there if you, you, you don't get anywhere to park your car on the street. But in Kumasi, these things are limited. So it makes us really, really suffer before you can even park your car, even at a safer place, in order to go about your you know, daily activities. They are left with no choice but to join in the unauthorized parking phenomenon, which creates greater human and vehicular congestion. It's very difficult for us, the drivers. For example, when you pick a passenger here and you take him to a doom or central market, when the person said, maybe wait for me about 10 minutes or 15 minutes and bring me back, for, for you to get even a small space to park and wait for the person is very difficult. Unless you park by the roadside. By the roadside, it's is, is, is very risky. Somebody can hit you with his car or somebody can just do anything to the car. Despite increased economic activity that comes with springing up of such buildings in strategic locations, there are challenges. Director of Business Development at First Bank, Gordon Derry, says the situation is a disincentive for business. To affect business in terms of the inconvenience, I mean, to uh, people who come to the property to do business. The other aspect is that um, you might then not have people readily come into your property to rent it. And uh, if they have alternatives where they have you know, adequate parking space, then you see that they would rather be going there. And so uh, in terms of business, when you want to uh, cite your business, you will be looking at do I have adequate parking, one for staff and two for uh, the customers who will be coming around. And uh, I've had customers complain I mean, when they go to do businesses, they don't have places to park. So it's a big concern. And, uh... So exactly what is the reason for putting up such commercial structures without consideration for parking spaces? Architect Kofi Asari attempts some explanations. Many people design with disregard to the building code, they design with disregard to zoning um, regulations and all of that. So it comes down to the people who enforce these um, regulations. Now, the architect is a businessman. Whoever designs, and I'm not sitting here to say that many of those buildings are designed by architects or not designed by architects. Whoever designs them is a businessman. He's into um, give his clients what he or she wants. At the end of the day, they say the one who pays, the one who decides. And if your client is asking you to do this, as a businessman, he goes in to do that. There must be somebody who is there to pack the whip and say, no, you can't do that. To address the unpleasant situation, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Benito Ousubio, wants regulatory agencies to crack the whip. But you should provide at least 30% of the number of your capacity okay. parking space must be provided. It's an indictment, I would say, on the, the regulatory bodies, which are? which are those who have to approve of plans, building permits, who are they, our own uh, metropolitan assembly, and then the various uh, district assemblies. They are to ensure that, because usually they provide it in their plans. But by the time they complete the structure, you will still want to use the, uh, the space that was provided for something else. Kumasi, 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 Kumasi. Kumasi continues to expand at a fast pace. The city authorities must insist on proper planning for every developer to conform to. Prince Apia, reporting. 
All right, we are moving on to other news. And Filipino firm Morocco has confirmed that it would officially take over ECG in the middle of January next year. Now, the chief executive officer of the uh, Millennium Development Authority, Benjamin Isson, has been speaking to us about that. Watch this report. I think that over the two years, we've struggled, we've met challenges, we've overcome them, and we've now reached where we are. So that's why we are proud of ourselves. We want to move on. ECG must transfer to the new company, and that will come early next year. That is the challenge we have now, so that we can get all on board to be able to um, uh, overcome the condition that precedent that we have put into place to be able to achieve the results we are looking for. So exactly what date are you talking about for the new owners of ECG? Exactly what date next year? We cannot, if at ordinarily, from our, from our time schedules, we are talking about middle of January. That is when we expect that we would have done all what is necessary for them to take over from ECG. And then they start running the business. So that is the date we have in mind. He's emphasized the fact that there will be no job losses. And I, I think we must give a little credibility to our leaders. That is what is written into the agreement. So therefore, personally, I do not know where it's coming from. As far as I'm concerned, working with government, what government has said and put on the table is what I work with. Except somebody comes to tell me that he had something different. But so far, so good. They've indicated that the, the new concessionaire must work with the people who are there and even enhance their packages if possible. So the chief executive of MEDA, uh, Martin Isson Benjamin, speaking there in that interview rather with our, uh, my colleague Bismarck Awusa. You're still watching Business Live. We're taking a short break. When we come back, a discussion about Ghana's movie industry. We want to stick around for that. But um, the much talk about back to school fair, the Joy FM one, of course, I'm talking about is back and it launched today. And um, Child Society has been speaking to some exhibitors as well as uh, people who have been visiting the fair. All is set for the 2018 Back to School Fair, which is underway at the Providence Center of the Ghana International Trade Fair Center here at La in Accra. It's all about getting the best deals for your wards as they prepare for school and even for yourself. If you need the best reading materials that could help prep up your intellectual capacities, we get inside there to interact with both patrons and exhibitors on the expectations and all that we need to know about the mouth watering deals yet to be uncovered. The biggest expectation a higher patronage this year this time around we have um because gifts that uh, we are giving out we also have our coloring section for every kid that comes in it's free you just come in and you just uh, color and take your coloring away because we we have the best quality stationery in the country when you come we have our big evolution pencil it's very bendable it won't break it's very durable as well. Even when it falls, the, the lead won't break. We have our crystal fine and crystal original pencils. You know, we, we listen to the needs of the consumer and we have two uh, variants for them. We have the fine, which is more tuned for the cursive handwriting and the original, which is more tweeted for the, those who write in block. We are expecting people to come then come and see the kind of books we have. We have workbooks, motivational books, story books, not only for kids, but are for adults as well too. Yeah. They are very affordable, very, very. You can come and, like, with a little, you can get a whole lot of books. I think it's a nice event. I just came to buy some books, and then I think it's okay. I like it. Yeah. It's a nice event. I came here to buy books. It's affordable and I like it. I may come here next time. So you've heard from both exhibitors and patrons as to the main reason why we should be at the Providence Center of the International Trade Fair here in Accra, La, in that regard, for the Back to School Fair, which is underway as we speak. You can see behind me, exhibitors have lined up. You know, patrons are currently here, massive discounts and mouth-watering deals in that regard. And everything that you need about when it comes to books, education, you know, recreation, and everything in between. It's all happening here. Just pass by and you will never forget it. I'm Charles Ayata reporting for Joy Business.
right, so that was Charles Ita reporting. Uh, what was the one thing you always look forward to at my head of school? We my playing. school bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and All pencil. Right. All right, that'll be it for tonight's program. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Crown. And my name is Sandra Isenafeno. Just do enjoy your weekend. <laughs>